Hello and welcome to another edition of Mind Expanse Digital Media Training. Uh, today we're going to look at building a brick wall texture uh, using nothing but Photoshop. Uh, and again, I'm using Elements, but any Photoshop program will do this. Uh, first thing we need to do is make sure that we are creating something that is square because the purpose of this texture is to actually use it within a video game environment or some other 3D modeling program. So we have a few options. Everything's got to be in the power too, so we can do a, a thousand 24 or 2048 or we can do you know 64 by 64 it really depends on what you're trying to do I'm just going to do 1024 by 1024 pixels and I'm going to leave my resolution at 300 and I have a white background only because I want to maybe alter that to make it a little bit look grungy or something maybe later on so it doesn't look so clean uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about and so I start off with something like this now Depending upon which version of Photoshop you're using, you're going to just going to go to the tools, and you may go up into here and actually get your your images and so forth, and CS5 or CS3 or one of the other programs. But in this program, it's actually easily located. I'm going to use a rectangle tool, so I'm going to select here, and I can change my color. So if I don't like this particular red, um, I can scroll through and see if I can find something that's a little bit deeper. Maybe I'll just pick this one without going through a color picker, and then I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to simply draw something that looks kind of like a brick. Now, just again, the size is whatever you want it to be. And I'm going to go over here and do the selection tool, and I'm just going to place this, and if I don't like that, I'll use my arrow keys just to get a little bit more even and more precise. So what I've done is I've just created one block now for my wall. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some features to this. So in this particular program, I'll just right mouse click, and you can do it in the other one as well, and I'm going to change its style. So I'm going to go to Edit Style, and I'm going to add a stroke. Now the stroke, um, you can pick your color. I'm going to use black. I'm not going to use a very big one. I just want it to kind of be there, and I'm going to say OK. And now if I click off, you can see I've got a little bit of an outline going on. Uh, I could also go into the same thing, back to Edit Layer Style, and I can put a bevel on it. So maybe I want to make it look like it has uh, some kind of shape to it um, as far as that's concerned. So I'm going to let it go down in this particular case. Uh, and I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to leave it like this. Now, maybe there's something else I want to do with this. Maybe I want to select this and give it a little bit dirtier look. So I'm going to go into my filters, same thing in any of the other Photoshops, and I'm going to look for something that's actually in here. So there's something like grain. Uh, it's going to want to do a little cleaning up first. See how I can add some different things here as far as the intensity, so I can just bring that down some so it's not quite so overpowering. I put it at 15. I'll leave the contrast where it is and of course you've got different options um, as far as what's concerned. But I'm going to do this particular one and you can see I've got a little bit of roughness going on. Now this will be important when we do something later on. I'm going to say OK. Uh, related to creating a uh, bump map for it. So I'm going to go in and just reposition this one more time since I made these adjustments and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do duplicate layer and then I'm just going to use my arrow key and move it over. I don't have to, um, but if I want to try to keep sure, make sure everything's in line, I can do that. And then once I do that, um, I can also go into these as I'm doing this and select both of them by holding down the shift key. And I can actually say I want to link the layers together and then I'll duplicate these again. Um, and then I'm just going to take that and move this over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to even this space up just a little bit here. So these are a little bit tighter. And what I may end up doing is just taking one of these particular ones and I'm going to say unlink and I'm just going to duplicate this one layer. And I'm just going to take that and it should be one of these here. And I can actually overlay this some if I want. And my first couple ones, I'm going to want to do this. So I'm just going to space these out so they look kind of like they're evenly spaced, like a wall would be. And then I'm just going to use my selection tool, select all of them, and then I'm going to center this up some. My whole purpose is to stagger this particular item so it looks kind of like a brick wall. So I now have this, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link these together. And then I'm going to go one more time and I'm going to do a duplication. So duplicate the layer again. Um, oops. 
because I didn't have them all uh, selected in that particular range, I'm going to go back into here and select that. And we're going to actually say link layers and then duplicate the layer. And then we're just going to bring this down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this again. And I'm going to bring this down just a hair. So I don't want it to be 100% perfect is what I'm getting at. And then I can also do some merging of this if I want. So if I select all these, I can actually say uh, merge uh, visible layers. If I do a merge layer, just make sure that you're careful with that, that you don't uh, end up doing the whole thing. I'm going to duplicate it again. And now I'm just going to bring this down. And what I'm trying to do is just fill up this wall space. And so you can see this is a relatively simple process. Uh, and you don't have to get real crazy with it. Um, but you can really go nuts if you want and actually create this. So I'm just going to fill up this space uh, with these particular items that I have. And we're going to keep going from there. So if I keep selecting the one I'm working with, it'll be closer to where I need to be. And now I have that here. And then I need one more up here. So I'm going to do a duplicate. And I'm going to bring that down. And I don't care if it's hanging off or not uh, at this point. I just need it here. So I now have these particular items in place. Um, and I may want to actually take all these and select them. And then move this up. So I kind of break this space up so it's somewhat even. So I want to duplicate this out like I'm going to do. It's going to look more like what it needs to look like. Okay. So now I'm just simply going to go up to here and I'm going to say save for web. I'm going to save this out to my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and use a high. I can use maximum if I want quality to 100% so I don't lose anything. And I'm going to say save and I'm saving as a JPEG and I'm going to put in here brick wall. So I've created this wall. I've now made it look somewhat uh, you know, like a brick wall. But there's a few more things I need to do with this. Uh, one of the things is, and so I'm going to go ahead and save this file while I'm at it, and we'll just do brick wall. Uh, let me make sure I save this as a PDF. Because right now it's going as PDF, so let's do it as a PSD. So this way I can edit it later. And brick wall. Okay, so I'm going to say file and close. And then I'm going to say file open. Uh, let me go up here. Sorry about that. And I'm going to go back to my JPEG. And I'm going to look for that particular wall. I'm going to say open. Now one of the cool features I can do is I can go up into my filter and we want to make this tileable so we can actually tile. If we made this into a wall we were going to pull it in and use it as a wall and something. So I'm going to go to other underneath my filter and I'm going to choose something called offset. Now if you recall I made this 1024 um, and you can see what it's doing right now is it's adding a plus 32 but I want to do my horizontal as uh, instead of that half of the actual 1024. So that's going to come out to be 512. And you'll see that that's doing that. I'm going to make this equal to 0. And I'm going to say OK. Now what's happened is it's actually made this into something that will be tileable across uh, left and right just by simply doing that. Um, so I can actually go out now and save this as my object pull this in and use it the way it is. I can actually put these side by side. And it should actually be seamless when I do that. So let's just go ahead and do a file save as, and I'm going to do brick wall file one, and I'll leave it at maximum. So file and close, and we're going to make a new file, and we're going to say new blank file, and that's going to be width's going to be 2048. I'm going to leave the height as the same, and I'm going to come in and say file and place. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to slide this over here, 
and then I'm going to go back and do another place where I could duplicate uh, really at this point but we're going to go ahead and do another place and when I do that you're going to see that when I put these side by side uh, they do tile seamlessly and they make this illusion of a brick wall so relatively easy concept now one of the things I can do is if I don't want this to be quite so white in the background uh, make sure you double click to unlock first. I can go in and I can change my color of this fill. Um, so I can go in in my spectrum and pick something that's a little dirtier looking. Uh, I can also go into here and just pick something that's a little off and then use my paint bucket. And I can simply just fill that. And then when I turn these back on, you can see that it's not going to look you know, as noticeable because I didn't do a drastic change. But if I were to go and let me just turn this off and do something a little bit more drastic, I will do something like a gray and I fill that and then I bring this back. Um, you will see that basically because I merged this out as a solid layer, none of this white is going to matter. So this is something I need to do before I actually do this um, because no matter what I do, this is how it's going to be. So if I will go back to my actual original file, and I say open and let's go to my my recent ones uh, if I were to go into this particular one and change this color with the fill bucket and then come back and I'm just left mouse clicking and dragging down to turn these on and off you can see how that's kind of grayed out here so just keep in mind that if I flatten the layer out and I go and change it I'm not going to see anything but if I go through and I do this process of uh, changing the color in advance and I can actually change the way it looks so that's why you always keep your original files so hopefully this is going to help you create some textures now you can be creative you can create rocks and textures and beach sand and all kinds of different things like this uh, the filter tools are going to be helpful for that so we'll see in another video where we're actually going to take one of these this wall item and we're going to actually run it through a bump map editor so we'll be able to get some 3d uh, effects to it so see you in the next time